Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. That was a great speech. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here today. And I wanted to uh, thank a few other special people that are here today. I have my wife, my three kids, and actually my mother and father all the way from Ontario are here with us today. So why don't you stand up, guys, and stand up. Yeah. Do a wave for us, yeah. So we're so serious about taking this country back that we've brought out the special forces here and um, we're not going to stop until we do that. What we have is a government in Ottawa who is just filled with the same cronyist elite liberals that run the media and all these other things and they think that they speak for everybody. <clears throat> now, that wouldn't be the end of the world if we had an opposition that was willing to actually say something. Right? Ugh. Like if we had a party or a movement or whatever that was actually willing to stand up for Canadians, that wouldn't be too big of a deal. We could, you know, they could say their stuff and we could call them out on it. But unfortunately, we have a opposition party, a conservative party, that believes the path to success is to compromise on every controversial issue, to avoid controversy at all costs. And they keep doing it and they keep losing. And we've all heard, you know, that definition of insanity. You know, when are you crazy? If you keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And yet, when we lose by compromising, they say, oh, well, we didn't compromise enough. So let's compromise even more next time. And I hope that this time, the, the Canadians anyways, or conservative Canadians will learn that compromise is not the path to victory. We're seeing Aaron O'Toole at the lowest levels that this party has, has been at in the polls since merger, since joinder. So, you know, the latest kind of amalgamation of polls is something like conservative, uh, liberals 39, conservatives at 28, you know, and some of these polls, and when you look at regional breakdown, O'Toole is trailing the liberals the most in the areas that he needs to win in. So yeah, he's not doing the best out here, but he's doing real bad in Ontario, right? But he's doing all the right things. He's compromising. He's, you know, marching in all the right parades. He, he loves abortion. He's, you know, he's doing all these things. He's in favor of, you know, days and things that I didn't even know existed, you know, whatever, you know, transgender this or that day and, you know, all these, you know. So he's doing it all right, according to the, you know, the high paid liberal consultants that they like to hire over there at, at the conservative headquarters, and yet he's failing. And I believe that this country needs a leader who will stop apologizing every day, who will stop, thank you, that's right. And who will stop uh, selling out our interests Every time, you know, China comes knocking or, you know, some big, uh, you know, Toronto business comes, comes knocking. We need a leader that's willing to stand up for Canada at all times and Canadians, right? And yet we're being sold out continuously, whether it's, you know, letting our farmland or residential real estate be sold out to China or other countries like this, or our businesses, our resources. You know, it, it seems like if you want to do something on your property, you should start a company in China, buy something here, because you can do a lot more than average Canadians who own their land can do here. And that's the type of thing that we're seeing. It is terrible. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to have a movement that has Canada's back, that isn't left or right per se, but is, is true north, true to Canadian values, true to Canadian independence, true to family values, true to the values that founded this country, and get away from all these people playing games. You know, they say that politics is Hollywood for ugly people. <laughs> it's largely true, it's largely true. 
But the fact is, is it's a game for these people. That's why, that's why if you've ever, has anyone here ever actually watched Question Period? Yeah, three people. Well, I'll give you a hint. It's not answer period. It's just question period. Okay? But the thing is, is the reason why, just if you ever do watch it, you'll see that no one really answers any questions, particularly Justin Trudeau. I've never seen, I've, I've honestly never seen him answer a question once. And I've seen hundreds of questions posed to him. The reason why is because they only care about doing their little theater message. We cut our emissions by, you know, 18% or whatever it is. Why don't we do rolling lockdowns for the environment? They're just, they're, there's always something that these people have to trample on our freedoms, to take away our rights, and to put us under the thumb of the government. And, you know, if it, if it weren't for seeing so many people like you folks around the country, and it literally is in every province, I, was, I have six court summons on my desk at home from attending massive anti-lockdown rallies in Ontario. Massive rallies. That's right. We're seeing people get fed up all over the country. And they just don't trust anybody anymore. There's, there's a poll that I've seen where six out of 10 Canadians don't feel at home in any federal political party. And that's a big deal. There's a lot of parties, right? There's, you know, Greens, Separatists, uh, you know, NDP, Conservative, Liberal. I mean, you would think that the average Canadian would be able to find a home in one of those parties. And yet, Canadians are, you know, in, in the lifetime of many people in this room, the voting turnout in this country was like high 80s percentage. Sometimes, nine, like, Canadians used to be involved, but no more. Many people don't vote, and the ones that do kind of hold, you know, many hold their nose. There's very few people who are happy with the political status quo in this country. And I think we need to change. And we don't need, we don't need, you know, another, you know, rich uh, party with all these consultants and all this stuff. We need, a, we need a party that's willing to just stand up for Canadians. And yes, it, it can get dicey sometimes. And, you know, the media can say nasty things about you. But we need a movement that's willing to stand up for Canadians. The movement that I'm starting is going to do that. And I believe that if someone can do this well, we can take back this country. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Let's clap for that too. Thank you. Yeah.